Hey, hey there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. It's another Red Pill Religion podcast, Red Pill Religion, where we say many things. But one of the things that we say is that you do not have to be religious. That doesn't mean you get to lie about history, lie about science, and bully religious people. So please support our work on redpillreligion.com. Redpillreligion.com, where every day we have updated articles videos by us, videos by our others, videos by our volunteer staff, of which we have more than a dozen, um, videos by, uh, videos and essays by others. Um, we could always use your spiritual as well as financial support. We're here every day and every night. Um, we expect don't expect, accept donations at PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, and Maker Support. Um, please find us on Gab AI at Red Pill Religion. Find us on Make Our Support at Red Pill Religion. Find us on Facebook at Red Pill Religion and on Patreon at Red Pill Religion. Also, if you want to come in and meet us in our group in uh, uh, Discord, if you're a nerd, uh, please feel free to drop by our Discord chat room where we talk about comic books and um, manga and anime and history and science and philosophy and religion and we do like making fun of atheists but also we have atheist friends who like hanging out with us so feel free to come on by especially if you ever like to come on and ask us some questions or anything joining us tonight we're going to be answering um seth andrews christianity make me talk like an idiot um i'll just be honest up front and say he should have just said christianity uh, made me talk like a hateful, bullying, shallow jerk, um, and not like most Christians at all, but whatever. Um, joining us today is several friends. Uh, let's see, uh, I, uh, have, we have Youngblood Ray from Minnesota. Say hi, Youngblood. Oh, did we miss him? Okay, well, he's a Protestant of some sort, um, and also we have from uh, 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 elsewhere, uh, The White Engine. Go to subscribe to his YouTube channel, everybody. And also say hi, White Engine. Hola. Then we have Mr. Bra Brass, our dirty apostate uh, ex-Christian deist friend. Say hi, Mr. Brass. Hello there. Hi, Mr. Brass. Nice to be here today. Oh, and then also we have the disgusting gay atheist anarchist, uh, 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 Derek. Say hi, Derek. I'm not friends with them. They have me trapped in the day it's fall together. Help me. <laughs> uh, the dirty papist, um, uh, Albrecht von Stolen from the Philippines. Say hi, dirty papist. Jim <laughs> Bobre. And uh, uh, so, what we're going to be looking at today is Seth Andrews, the so-called, I can't remember, is Seth Andrews supposed to be the thinking atheist, or did the so-called thinking yeah. atheist host his friends? No he's, no, he's not. He used to be, uh, like Aaron Rod, he used to be one of Dell Hunt's lap dogs until he went solo, and now he's the, basically the Mr. Rogers of atheism. He's, he, he, puts, he tries to be humble and says that he's not the thinking atheist, that it's a symbol to reject faith or some nonsense like that. Oh, God. Okay. Of course, by faith, he means belief without evidence. Which he yeah, the, has an abundance the non scholarly of... anti-theist definition. Yeah, exactly. Well, and now, I think um, he's nearing 50 now, which means he used to be a... Uh, he, he deconverted in his mid-30s, I think, uh, give or take a few years. But, um, yeah, after all that time of being wrong, he somehow thinks he's right. You, you know, the thing is, is that statistically, uh, left to their own devices, most atheists are male. Most of them have difficulty with their fathers or no father at all, so they have daddy issues, essentially. I know I was one, and statistically, most of us still wind up leaving atheism. Um, uh, unless, of course, you know, we have professional reasons and can't get out, or even somebody's and like blackmailing the, and like us. The, yeah. And like Dillahunty and Aaron Raw, he, uh, he, he's a member of their inner circle, and make, they make up the unholy trinity, where they tour around the country evangelizing atheism. 
I, I, yeah, and like they can't get out if they if they do have they're, they're any like doubts. That. I mean, well, um, Aaron Ra is basically the douchebag of the group, and Dylan Hunty is either or, depending on the day. And Andrews is the kind of guy who will make you feel better about it. I, I don't know. I'd like to ask Andrew exactly what, because I'm not sure what his answer would be. But I would like Andrew what he think he thinks. His fellow atheists, including his most devoted audience, would say if he came out one day and says, you know what, I really do think there is something to the near-death experience and the NDE data, and maybe there is an afterlife after all, and I should stop being so dogmatic, um, because if I could have been wrong about that, maybe there's some kind of God or spirit forces. If you just said something just that generic, I bet they would tear you to shreds and your career would be over, sir. sir. Um, and somebody ought to acknowledge, you ought to acknowledge that. I'm quite positive you accuse religious people of, you know, taking money for what they do. How much money have you made over the years um, peddling this hateful, shallow brand of atheism that you, you know, this pastier of being nice is, I don't know. Let's go ahead and, by the way, let me thank Mr. Brass especially for getting, doing the time points. Um, you know, if, if, if this guy tries to claim, you know, here's the video we're doing. It's linked in the low bar. Uh, Seth Andrews, Christianity made me talk like an idiot. Uh, Mr. Brass marked up the most appropriate time points. If this guy tries to claim that we quoted him out of context, I don't believe him in advance. Let us know what we did. Uh, mostly let's just watch some painful nastiness in the guise of being funny. And now I am an atheist, and people will say, well, what's your biggest beef with Christianity? And I usually give my standard response, starting with the Bible, otherwise known as the Goat Herder's Guide to the Universe. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, <laughs> Mon's Age Goat Herders. I would like to know, is, is it, sir, can you present any evidence that you are truly smarter or wiser in any way than a Bronze Age goat herder, except that you you know have <laughs> that, you know how to do PowerPoint and use a microphone, which I'm pretty sure I could train a monkey how to do. I know I could train. Well, he, a he also he also goat. ran a Christ, uh, Christian Christian um, radio show in the nineties. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean. I, I, Sense. In fact, I, I would say it's more like, uh, you know, he seems to be one, of, obviously, the worst atheists always come from these Bible thumper traditions, you know, something rooted in the King James onlyism and the, uh, the sufficiency Yeah, he, 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 he gave you a raise in a fundamentalist household. Yeah, the sufficiency. should tell you something. Yeah, okay. I see. love those households a ton. He can't, well, fundamentalist <laughs> households? Yeah, well, see, see the book, uh, Born Fundamentalist, Born Again Catholic, uh, uh, guys, for, uh, you know, a, resp a more sane response. Uh, but uh, fundamentalist Christianity of that type is such a d tiny minority. And then that, that's why I really, I find it hateful of guys like Seth got here to, uh, I find it really genuinely hateful for guys like Seth or others who grew up in a really dysfunctionally restrictive, rigid, lockstep thinking uh, religion, um, which is fringe, and then go after everybody else. I'll recommend again this book, Born Fundamentalist, Born Again Catholic. It's from somebody who left fundamentalism because he found truth in, you know, a much more sophisticated, much more intellectual, much not at all mind controlling religion, despite the the um, uh, ridiculous uh, stereotypes about us as Catholics. But I would even go so far to say, if you came up out of that kind of religion, that fundamentalist, Bible only literalist stuff, and you found the thinking claustrophobic, I would agree with you. I grew up in that too. I would also say you don't. Ha I mean, I'll make a case for Catholicism if you want, but I'll make a, a strong case. I would tell you that Taoism makes more sense than going atheist. Um, uh, really, it does. It's it's like it's it's uh, becoming a Stoic theist makes more sense than atheism. Freaking getting into Edgar Casey makes more sense than atheism, guy. Um, all you've done is close your mind to ideas and painted yourself as better than other people because of a few points, uh, you know, prejudices you have in the world. I'm sorry, did anybody want to say anything else to this guy or should we move on? He's also, um, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, what I find funny about this is like, please note, this seems to make this idea that the Bible was written by goat herd, by Bronze Age goat herders and stuff like that. But I mean, yeah. the Bible was written by historians, philosophers, Doctors, um, educated priests, physicists. and they weren't even in the desert for the most part. They were in coastal plains. It's 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 ridiculous. Yeah, on multiple levels. The Bible, and they're not even in the, and they weren't even in the, the the Bible wasn't even written in the Bronze Age. It was written in the I Iron know. Age. I know you have to be so stupid to even do that. But I actually sometimes I'm willing to just give it to him and I say, well, why are you smarter than a Bronze Age goat herder? I mean, really, why are you? Because iPhones. I mean. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, there's a. Um, yeah, the parts in the Bible that take place in the desert are the life of Abraham and, uh, and yeah. Moses' trek in the desert, and that's about it. Every, the land is pretty much lush after that point. Yeah, no. It's, okay, somebody's making a huge noise. Please mute yourselves if you're not talking. Okay, anyway. All right, well, let's move on with the, with the next part that Derek uh, marked up for us, uh, 7 minutes to 7.32. Demonstrates thanks. Thanks to whom? We can all think of instances when someone thanked God for the meal without giving one second to the people who planted the food, cultivated the food, harvested the food, transported the food, bought and sold the food, prepared the food, and then cleaned up the mess afterward. The cooks completely ignored from the equation because we're busy giving our gratitude to a ghost. As my friend Aaron Ra likes to say, it's the equivalent of saying, please magically enchant this food. Right? What on earth, um, what on earth primitive type of Christian were you when you were a Christian, sir? Holy shit, that was dumb. Is that really what you thought when you were a Christian? Really? Okay, anybody got anything else to say to that? Okay. I have one. Go this ahead. stupid. It hurts. It hurts. I mean, really, you went from one re mental. I mean, this is like, this is like God, painful. God, painful God created. God painful created the chefs. God created the cooks. God created the waiters. You don't. You okay? Listen, I'm gonna give this to you, Seth. In which case, you know, I can't believe by now nobody's given this to you. But whatever. God is basically the idea that something intelligent is running the universe. And in fact, what more sophisticated Christians for thousands of years have said is that creation is ongoing. So the creator is one that's making it all go now. That the, the, that the universe is constant creation. All this change we're experiencing, all this stuff we're doing is a process of constant creation. This, by the way, is why creation versus evolution debates look dumb to most educated Christians. I'll give it to you in a thought bomb, Seth, and let's see if you can understand it and at least repeat it back to me. God is the operating intelligence that is ultimately underlying the laws of physics and probability. God is running the laws of intelligence of God is running the laws of physics of intel and intelligence. Oh my goodness. God is running the laws of physics and probability. There's an underlying intelligence running those. That's what God belief ultimately comes down to. Underlying, transcendent, we can split hairs. It's not hard to understand. And it's, there's plenty of evidence for it in multiple areas. So you're full of crap just reducing everything in this fashion. Who else wanted to add something? Well, yeah, if I may add something, it seems to make the, uh, the presumption that you have to either um, tell God thanks or you have to tell the chefs thanks, which is a false dichotomy. Why can't you do both? I Like, you know, why can't, why can't you be grateful for both the chef and for God? God runs the laws of physics and probability. We have free will within this amazingly logical, intelligible, orderly, predictable universe. And God has provided the means whereby we can be here and have the opportunity to do all the things we're doing together as human beings. And you thank God for all the happen. You would call it happenstance. See, the atheist believes these things are all happening by coincidence and by chance. Um, the, 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 the theist takes the more rational view that nothing truly happens by chance, that it's all God running 
running things. God runs the laws of probability in physics. They aren't random. We just don't know his plan. But it's wondrous to behold it uh, unfolding as we watch. Now, there's nothing irrational about this. What kind of primitive religion did you grow up in, son? Um, anybody else got anything, or I can just move on? All right. Move on. Let's go to, we're going to jump to, to really thank you much for, for doing this, Brass. 10, 28 to 11, 20. Let's go. This is Dr. Stephanie Frazier. She's a devout Christian. She believes in the literal healing power of Jesus Christ. She's a, a literal, biblical believer, okay? And she calls, she prays for Jesus' healing all the time and believes wholly in his power. She is a person of faith. She is also a dentist. Now... This would be an interesting social experiment. I don't recommend it if you know someone that's going through medical trauma, but it would be interesting, would it not, to talk to the believer who has some loved one going in for a surgical procedure and say, would you trust more the believer, the person who holds to your all-powerful deity, who believes in the healing power of Jesus Christ, and you name and claim that healing, would you hold to the dentist in the operating room, or would you rather an atheist who knew what the hell she was doing? Uh, to be honest, as a former atheist of many years, who used to believe the atheist lie that there is no difference in character between atheist and religious people, which is total BS, um, uh, uh, there is. Um, uh, uh, I would utterly trust the believer more. Um, uh, uh, I would assume the atheist was a condescending know-it-all who tended not to take responsibility for their own actions and that whatever their, uh, their vaunted reputation, they were probably manipulators who didn't always do everything honestly because atheists tend to care more about their reputation than anything else, including just being honest. That's what I find. Um, especially those who are, and by that I mean really it's the identitarians like you who fly that capital A identi atheist it, identitarianism. It depends, it depends on the atheist. Yeah, it depends on the identitarianismness of it. A lot of atheists are really just agnostic and uninterested and get bullied into calling themselves atheists. Seth here has financial motive to stay dogmatically uh, atheist uh, and hateful, uh. so he's got to do it to keep making a living. Um, what are you going to do if you start questioning your atheism, Seth? A lot of guys do. I just had uh, up interview, an interview with a molecular biologist who did. I know a biochemist who did. I know an astrophysicist who did. I know multiple really smart people uh, who began questioning atheism, and that's all they wrote, because you can't sustain atheism rationally, Seth. Go ahead. Um. Yeah, but I also may add, this makes the assumption, like, why is their beliefs only the thing that... lower quality atheist doctor that may not make her patients feel better. I just think, you know, he sort of makes it seem like just being a Christian doctor somehow makes you unqualified to be a, a doctor. Just oh, being a Christian makes you unqualified to be a doctor. Oh, yeah, it's filthy bigotry that he slips in with his audience. And let me tell you, by the way, for Seth and his audience, which, by the way, will, again, mostly primarily be insecure uh, males with uh, father issues will be about 90 percent of that audience there um, I used to fit the profile too as an ex-atheist here um, but uh, seriously and you know with chips on their shoulders and you know anyway what got me off on that rant um, who had something else to say um, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Albrecht. Yeah, and here's the thing. Like, he kind of comes off, and and I may be reading too much into this, he kind of comes off like he's making it sound like the doctor who believes in fear. Like, like, listen, dude, I don't care if the doctor, like, 
I'd rather the dog be a believer. Like, yeah, the person will operate on me, and they will pray with me. But yes, but that doesn't mean if they believe in something that it's automatically like their years in medical school mean nothing. Like, like where did this guy go? That's my question. Hey, I and uh, so many doctors wind up being religious as they get late in life. Here's the thing: it is actually a common transition for men um, to kind of grow up uh, atheist or agnostic or uninterested and dismissive. But then, as they get older and things happen to them, usually they start to think deeper about things, and they discover that atheism is not rationally sustainable and is really kind of a mean and arrogant position because it is. Anybody else want to say something? I, I do. Go ahead, Albrecht. The guy operates under a false dichotomy of the Christians tend to... Okay, the guy thinks that Christians all they do is pray the illness away, which is wrong. Correct. God created the physician so that, he, so that the physician can heal people. God also gave the physician the knowledge on how to heal people. In Seth's, fault, in Seth's case, the Christian dentist and the atheist dentist both have qualifications to do so because, guess what? They studied under the right courses and whatnot. This guy, sorry, Seth's premises are really, really, really stupid and it really hurts my brain. Seth and his audience, here's the question for Seth's audience who pride themselves on science. We do have multiple peer-reviewed studies which, uh, which show that prayer is effective in quite a number of areas, including uh, being able to beat placebo in many cases. Skeptics on the internet uh, try to obscure the fact that we have that, and skeptics on the internet even sometimes misrepresent what we have in the peer-reviewed data. I can show you where skeptics on the internet and atheists on the internet actively misrepresent Science, peer-reviewed scientific data, fully rigorously peer-reviewed scientific <coughs> data, misrepresent but, it, um, and there is evidence for an afterlife, and anybody who says there isn't is lying. Go ahead, Engine. But, but, that, but that said, yeah. contrary to popular myth, praying isn't asking what you want and having it answered exactly the way you want it. When Correct. You God is not a wish fairy. God is the ultimate intelligence operating the laws of physics and probability. You're asking that to, to help you. Um, it's, it's almost unthinkable that, you know, you're asking God to do that. That's, um, but we believe God answers prayers. Which means, yes, that we seem somehow to be able to affect the laws of probability, probability with there's, our prayers. And, and we have evidence that, we, that that is true. Hmm? There's three ways pr prayers are answered. Yes, no, and wait. Yeah. 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 Or, or when it's good for you. Not the way you want. The, or here's an old Catholic way of doing, uh, of putting it, too. It's, uh, the, not until it's good for you. It's not good for you right now. You'll have to wait. <laughs> you know. I mean, all the praying is supposed to do is just showing that you recognize God as an ultimate authority. That's it's correct. It's not supposed to be like you're. It's not like you're supposed to be like. Um, it's not like God the genie that you just rub a lamp and you get three wishes. Yeah, yeah. God is it's not a big wish happy blue genie that sings songs and grants wishes. All right. Why don't we jump ahead to the next one, which is going to be. <laughs> 2005 to 2040. Um, oh, he's going to go after karma here. You know what? I, I can't wait to go out uh, to, to, to talk about that as a Christian. Problem is, hey, karma, I know some people you missed. <laughs> we can all what? think of horrible people who got away with it, right? Like you. We can all think of somebody. And we can all think of beautiful, you know wonderful, you worthy human people, beings. Dude whose lives were pit plagued with misery and pain. When I was a believer, a faithful believer, I would shrug and say, you know, whatever will be, will be. It's all part of God's master plan. Everything happens for a reason. A church roof collapses. Uh, okay, go ahead, somebody, because that just makes my brain hurt. That was like, um, Engine, go like, ahead. No, no, go ahead. That's a bad thing. Yeah, white, white, engine, then young blood. 
bad things just happen. That's not God's will. And anybody who, who's, uh, I piss on that kind of um, teaching, but it's something bad. That's not quite how I see it, but go ahead, go ahead, but go ahead. But there are examples in the Bible where God takes something bad and turns it into something good. Like, for example, Joseph's story. Yeah, we have a diversity of theological views and backgrounds on this show, and we embrace that. So go ahead, young blood. What, what, what I think this comes down to is a childish view on his part that because he doesn't see the people that he thinks deserve justice get justice in the way and the time and the fashion that he thinks it should be, at some point, you know, someone should confront him and the rest of his audience with the fact that we've all got people we are convinced never saw justice. Um, we usually will tend to do better, though, if we think to when we ourselves did not get justice, because, really, don't tell me you never did nothing bad. I did. Everybody does. Um, it's the question of, of, will there be final judgment? And I'll be honest, I, 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 in terms of karma, karma is not a Christian concept per se. You'll find some syncretics who can sort of make the idea work in, but I, I we don't need to... Karma, karma goes all the way back to Buddhism and but, even Hinduism. But it's the idea that, you know, uh, just to defend the idea, you know, explain the idea coherently. It's the idea that when you do evil, um, your soul will punish, be punished, and you'll, you're, you're probably either going to pay for that evil in this life before you die, or you'll pay off for it in the net where you go in the next life, which fundamentally isn't that different from what the the more Ab Abrahamic faiths who think we mostly only get one life say, because um, unlike the fundamentalist Christianity, I'm sure that you grew up in, Mayor Matt. Uh, most Christian denominations don't believe heaven and hell are binary propositions, and that there is a state and a t place after death where there's more to do and more we will experience before we go on to our ultimate destination. Um, most people, most religions, Shintoism is, is, is more sophisticated than that fundamentalist stuff you grew up in, sorry. Um, Buddhism is more sophisticated. We hang out with some Buddhists. Um, uh, Hinduism is more sophisticated than the stuff you're spouting, Matt. Anybody want to say anything else here? It's uh, Seth. Seth, Seth, Seth. Well, I'm sorry, I keep calling him. Okay, it's Seth Andrews. Um, I don't care. He And this guy really calls himself the thinking atheist. I mean, he's just so nasty. No, I, I, no, 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 I said before, he says he's not the thinking atheist, that it's a symbol to reject faith. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's got an awful... I mean, if there is no... I mean, ultimately, if there is no free will, no one actually thinks. They just react. They react to stimulus. I, 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 yeah, we're all meat robots. Scott Adams somehow manages to believe that. It mars his thinking. But okay, let's go to 2606 or so to 2640. Possible to please God. Faith, as it says in Hebrews, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is a verse designed to sound profound while making absolutely 
no sense. What? Have you noticed? What? Faith has substance you, because it reflects what we hope is going to happen. And then that substance of hope serves as evidence for that which we do not have evidence for. No! No! What do we sound like? I've been taught since my earliest memory. No! My brain hurts! <laughs> what? Does he... Hey! Hey! Can you show me mathematics? Can you, man, can you show me mathematics? Show me math. Math is a, is a thing not seen, but I have evidence that math works. Let me get a paper and pencil and draw you some squiggles. It'll show you how this un thing, unseeable, un un non-visible thing called math works. Also, x-rays. Have you heard of them? Have you ever seen one? Hey, has anybody here seen an x-ray? Have you ever seen anything non-corporeal? Uh, I have, but of course there would be no know, physical you know, evidence. You know what a gene looks like? Have you seen one for yourself? Yeah, evidence of things. Gravity cannot be seen. Magnetism cannot be seen. Seth. What about air? Seth. <laughs> well, you know, this all goes back to Mark Twain, you know. Um, <laughs> faith is believing what you know ain't so. Oh, Not so, Mr. Twain. Not so, Mr. <laughs> yeah, Twain. It's funny because he keeps well, yeah, okay. Not a good one. <laughs> yeah, sorry. He puts his fingers because, like, what, what, you know, because... Atheists like to quote this, but they don't take into account the entire chapter, the entire story that says, you know, that shows about the patriarchs who all came to believe in God, you know, who all had God um, reveal himself and, and ways that confirm their beliefs By the within way, their lifetimes. The thing is, is like, um, faith means trust gained through what has been shown, a.k.a. faith. And there's the assurance, a.k.a. the substance, of things expected by earned trust over the future, which is not seen. Basically, the patriarchs, they, they, um, they had had evidence of God, and they trusted in that evidence, and knew that he would fulfill his promises over time, long after they were dead. Yeah, let me, let me make a point about faith here, because it is a lie to say that faith is belief without evidence. That is a lie. That is always a lie. Um, only a certain kind of not very smart religious person would say something like that. It's ridiculous. Let me tell you something uh, to Seth's audience here. Um, Seth is giving you indoctrinated stupid. Let me tell you something. Evidence of things not seen. The Big Bang Theory. Not a single one of you has seen the Big Bang happen. Not a single one of you, I dare say, at this moment, has the scientific capacity and mathematical ability uh, to go out and go to uh, understand Georges Lemaitre's original figures and the, uh, and, and the relativity that, that, that they relied upon from Einstein and verify from the peer re original peer-reviewed studies for yourself that indeed the Big Bang Theory happened. Do you know why you believe in the Big Bang Theory? Because you've told about it and people have told you that it is science. I am not in, in any way doubting the Big Bang Theory. Uh, I, I, it was formula I'm Catholic and the Big Bang Theory was formulated by a Catholic priest named George Lemaitre. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, and, 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 but, uh, but you know what, I'm not arrogant about it either, because I am also willing as a Christian to say, yes, but I'm willing to concede I don't know everything, and maybe Big Bang Theory is wrong, um, am I, am I allowed to think that? Yeah, my world would not be shattered if it turned out the Big Bang Theory was wrong. In either case, you're taking a faith position, not, you, you have no way of verifying the Big Bang Theory. You're taking other people on faith. I mean, show me that you can verify that black holes actually exist. That you can do so. You personally can do that. Or are you taking on faith that people who taught you about black holes? Qu quantum physics. Have you seen a quantum? How do you know what one looks like? And how do you know they exist? And how do you know it's not just a mathematical trick? You take oh, it on that. faith. It's pretty good. Anybody else want to go? I mean, somebody else say something, because I... God, this stupid hurts.
we know we're there because we have faith. We have faith in the scientists and their integrity who told us this. And we have faith in the teachers and the textbooks that told us this. Um, nobody here has the ability without resources we don't even have to go and verify all this ourselves. Do we? Not drop our head, but we definitely we do learn that. But and again, I do think it's funny that they just believe that on a whim. But but we believe in someone judging us and looking over us. Oh no, we're crazy. Right. Some ultimate intelligence is writing things. You know, like 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 is posited in the digital physics theory of the universe, which uh, you know Neil deGrasse Tyson endorses, and so do others, which obviously implies something. Some ultimate intelligence, much more intelligent and much more powerful and aware, has to be doing things, which everybody would call a god. The jig is up, man. Even if you don't come to Jesus or whatever, uh, some kind of god has to exist. Some kind of afterlife have to exist. You guys chose the wrong paradigm, scientific naturalism. It's bunk. All right, anybody else want in, or should we jump on to 27 minutes? Logical positivism was proven to be inefficient back in the 70s. Yeah. That should tell something about the worldview of people like him. It's, it's, it's ridiculous how ideological it is. All right, let's go from 27 to 2750. I really thank you for this, Brass. Be like in our own life. They're like, be like John. Be like Paul. Go up and be like Peter. Did they ever say, be like Thomas? Doubting Thomas? No. Yeah. Why? Well, doubt's a problem. The other disciples, Thomas. John 20, 25, the other disciples therefore said unto him, we've seen the Lord, but he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. He wanted evidence. He's my favorite disciple. Mine too. Uh, show me the evidence. Mine Let's get too. some peer review going. Mine too. What did Jesus, Jesus rebuked him, right? He said, because you've seen me, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and believe. Have oh. faith that it's happened. Oh, oh long read. All right, I'll give some. I, I, I'm going to restrain myself. Who wants to go? I'll go. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Albrecht. Go ahead, Albrecht. Go. <laughs> okay. Thomas was also my favorite disciple because he was doubting. What happened? Jesus appeared, told Thomas to touch the parts of his body that were, that were, that suffered, sorry, that touched it. Jesus told Thomas to touch the holes in his hand and the wound in the side. What happened? Thomas, as I had found out that the resurrection was real, and then what happened? He decided to preach. He preached so hard that he went to India and became a martyr there. This is why you have Christians in India for the last 2,000 years. It's all because of St. Of Thomas the Doubter. Yeah, St. Thomas is one of my favorites. Actually, uh, being one of those uh, uh, crazy uh, uh, supposed pagan idolatry Catholics, I actually do say a prayer to St. Thomas on a regular basis in my rosary. Um, and um, uh, I love St. Thomas. Um, and I relate to him um, because the way I see him and the way most Christians actually see him, the smart ones, is he was insecure and mostly doubted himself. And he didn't want to believe because it was too good to be true sort of thing. And nothing would, you know... And I actually relate to that because I spent many years as an atheist and it took me a long time just to be confident that I thought that there was a God because um, um, uh, there was evidence. It was just, it took me a long time to get there because I was very confused. And uh, many years I, I became more and more confident about it, but I, I was not very articulate about it and I couldn't explain it very well to people. And I actually had people be rude and mean to me just because I couldn't articulate it very well, which was painful, but not everybody can. And, you know, so slowly over time, 
I, I mean, I eventually got to the point to the point where this point at this point I've seen so much evidence that it's just ridiculous, and frankly, I think it takes ridiculous denialism like Richard Carrier level denialism, like Ken Ham level denialism to deny that we have massive evidence that the resurrection did happen. Um, and and so it's it's so abusive for you people to pretend that we have no evidence for what we believe just because you don't find the evidence sufficient and you enjoy picking on and belittling Christians who you know will not fight back. The only thing I will say though is a growing number of Christians, even Christians of denominations that don't like each other, see atheists as bullies, as really nasty, hateful bullies that you have to learn to defend yourselves from. I've seen Baptists talk in that way. Baptists, as ba and they, they were Baptists who don't like Catholics, but I still heard them talking about how atheists are bullies and you've got to defend yourself from them because they lie so much about the Christian faith. And I'm like, yeah, you go. Um, atheists, you're horrible bullies, and you're a good example of a bully, sir. You really are. You're just hateful. You can't live and let live, and you can't be bothered. You know, you're, you're too busy making money evangelizing and making money and sowing. I mean, really, even if Christianity is just mythology, let them be, sir. Oh, my God. That's what I said when I was an atheist. But anyway, who else wants to add something? Yeah, and I mean, the whole problem is, is that the, the whole story wasn't to show that raising Lazarus from the dead, and he even seen the empty tomb. And Jesus is standing so, right before him but with all his friends, and he still can't believe it. Can't you see that that means he's like, he's in a state of denial. He just, he's so insecure, he, he thinks he that, must that, be hallucinating kind of thing. And then Aaron Ra actually said that if he saw Jesus appear to him in front of his face, he'd dismiss him as a hallucination. Yeah. Which is like, that's some serious faith commitment there, by the way. It really is. It really, really is. But, I mean, there's Jews who will say the same thing, and it's like, well, okay, they're, they're faithfully committed to that belief. I can't talk them out of that one, I don't think. Um, but admit that it's a faith physician, please, because there is evidence that the resurrection happened. Even, athe you know, as responsible atheists admit it, responsible Jews admit, well, yes, there's some evidence. Um, I, there, you know, there's Muslims who say, yeah, they'll I mean, get off of it. Uh, you know, anyway. All right. Should we move on? We got one more segment. Uh, we're going to 3638. Um, I mean, really, I, I, I mean it. It's like listening to a pe bunch of people that you know would like take our children away if they could, just for teaching them the rational evidence that we believe that there is a God. Um, it's, it, it's obscene. Yeah, and, and, the, and loving your enemy sure makes you talk like an idiot. Yeah, no lie. Okay, okay, we want to, I'm sorry, 36, 38. All right, I'm just going to go a little b b further back than that. This will be the last bit, and we'll wrap it up far better to grasp the universe as it really is than to persist in delusion, however satisfying and assuring. Perhaps one day, won't be soon, but maybe one day humanity will see an end to all of the insanity, the apologetics, acrobatics, the magical thinking, the corruption, the double speak, whatever. Naturalism. And perhaps one day we will see better ideas prevail. I want to leave you with an encouragement that you are part of that fight on every level in your families, in your homes, in your neighborhoods, in your friends, in your offices, in your schools, in your social circles, on the internet, as activists, as human beings, as rationalists, you are part of the solution. What you do and say matters. You are making a difference. And I encourage you to continue to do so. After all, what we all bullies. really want is not to kill God. We simply want a personal relationship with reality. Thank we are not a cult. We are not a cult. We have no ideology. Yay! We are not a cult. Come on, yeah, say it with theism. me. No, we are not a cult. I mean, 
Holy shit, man. Okay. I just, I just find that ironic. He said, your opinions, your voice, or something, whatever he said, matters. If we're all just soulless meat machines that appear on a random rock by chance in an uncaring universe filled with random tragedy, nothing at all matters on any level. And sir, by what by what standard do you assert that you and your ideological cohort grasp reality better than the rest of us? You can, you have no right to make that claim. You know, arbiter of truth, tell us more. Arbiter of reality, tell us more. Seth Andrews, who the fuck are you to say what reality is, sir? I mean, seriously, are you out of your mind? You deter you and your 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 cult brethren determine what reality is, really. By what standard? Because you put on the big capital A atheist button. And by the way, I mean, this is part of what got me out of atheism was noticing this cultism. You're wearing a fucking symbol um, that is universally recognized and has a message, and then you're saying we're not part of an organized movement and we have no ideology. Just we're smarter than all religious people, and religion is bad, and we have to take it over from rationalism. And we are the science people, and no one else has the science but us because we have the rationalism. Oh my God, you are a creepy cult. It's what made me think there must be something wrong with atheism more than ten years ago, more like fifteen, I think. Can't remember anymore. Someone else want to say something? Uh, yeah. First off, thanks for saying I think I cut my finger on that freaking reality thing, but yeah, it's like, like he's trying to say, oh, we're not trying to kill God. That's exactly what you people are trying to do. <laughs> How many times do we see it? Like, I go with Nietzsche. I may be having his name wrong, but Nietzsche is saying God Nietzsche. is dead and yeah. all that stuff. And... <laughs> And yeah, like, that's basically their whole thing is, oh, we want to kill God, or we want to make him cease to exist, or all that stuff. Like, don't, don't lie to my face, because we know what you're up to. Oh, notice he really said they got to go out there in the schools and their jobs and the government and stuff. In other words, they're going to actively proselytize their beliefs. And, like programmed drones, they're going to claim their beliefs are not beliefs. Well, horse shit. We have all kinds of reason to think there's a God. We have all kinds of reason to think there's an afterlife. We have all kinds of reason to think something intelligent is running things. We have all kinds of reason to think that there are valid spiritual truths in every major religious tradition and many minor ones. We can argue over good and evil ones in, in another time, but um, even as a Christian, I would say that the idea of reincarnation on the, you know, in the way that the Buddhists and the Hindus believe in it is certainly more rational and more evidence-based than your absurd evidence-free hypothesis that we just snuff like a candle, just, which you I, cannot I support. How he, how he pretends to be humble, but then he says something condescending, like, we just want to have a personal relationship with the reality. Like, <laughs> I do have a personal relationship with the reality. That's why I know there's a higher power. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, because, Albert. Yeah, the guy uh, talks like a fundamentalist Christian. Okay. How do I know it is? It's simple. That's how. Second. The guy acts as if atheism is in a religion. A crazed nut job fundamentalist, man, like something out of the invasion of the body snatchers. We're going to take you and we are going to reprogram you to think like us because we know reality and you do not. We will reprogram you. And if we cannot reprogram you, we will reprogram your children to think like us and, because and, we are the meat robots. And, and, we are the meat robots. Yeah, they, Go ahead. They become mindless husks eventually. They become uh, like soulless husks. We are the meat robots. We are the rational ones. <clears throat> Anyone else want in? 
I mean, really, somebody should point this out to Scott Adams sometimes. By the way, if somebody would send this to Seth, and, uh, Seth Andrews, please do. We got banned for life. I am banned for life from Twitter for offending atheist feelings. I am. I, you know, T.J. Kirk can threaten to kill, you know, can threaten to break my jaw, and we can see, you know, people calling for genocide of Christians, and that have lies on, on, on there, but say, you know, you know, um, lava, a too mean barbed insult at an atheist, and you're banned for life. For life, by the way. So someone send this to Seth Andrews. Ask if he supports that, that lifetime ban, too, by the way. Anyway, go you ahead. Should have a, you should interview him. Uh, interview ever, Seth uh, Andrews? He has an open invitation. I will not pretend that to be friends, but I will pretend to be. I will be polite if he'll listen to me complain about it, about why I and, and let's listen to me hear why I left the atheist cult, because uh, it is a cult network. I'm sorry, guy. You're in a cult. You you sell atheism Anti for a living. You sell anti-theism, and you sell he sells atheism, a specific, identifiable, very easily described brand of atheism. With a whole boatload of presuppositions that you can't support, uh, that go beyond simple atheism and are very ideological. Um, who else wants to say something? Or who who has final thoughts? Tell you what, everybody gets final thoughts. Starting with, uh, we'll move start for, for top to bottom again. Final thoughts, Albrex. Do you have any final thoughts for uh, this guy and his audience? He and his audience. Are, are fundamentalists for atheism, or rather anti-theism. Yeah, I agree. All this right. What happens when these people get to power? Yeah, really. Oh, we are going to reprogram your children to be meat robots like us because we are the rationalists. All right, Mr. Brass, what do you got? Well, yeah, I mean, I remember before in the video, he had went into the whole uh, Christians don't know their Bible, you know, like 50% of them, like, think like um, Sodom and Gomorrah are are married. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he goes into that beforehand, and um, I just always say, that, like, yeah, and these are the same people that are, are turning into atheists. They're no more smarter than they were before when they were stupid Christians. Now they're just switch sides and just stupid atheists. Yeah, why not With try the a... same exact view. And the, the idea that atheists know the Bible more than Christians, that's, that's propaganda for the most part. But there are a lot of Christians out there who don't know their Bibles, and they're the type of uh, impressionable people that become anti-theists. I am... Um, surprise, surprise. Yep, yep, yep. I'll, I'll be honest, reading the Bible helped make me an atheist. It was something called the deposit of the faith that brought me back to it. Was those your final thoughts, Injun? Sounds like that was your final thought. Young Blood, Sir Ray, what were your final thoughts? Yeah, Steph Andrews, dude, you you need to take some, some theology classes or something, because because you do not know what you're talking about, like no, like on the phone, you were funny. Christian and all that, but you're not much different now. No. Also, also, I can kind of see you and your eyes going hail Sagan in that last slide. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. All right, yeah, I mean, I think I've said all I need to say, except that I left atheism and I started questioning whether atheism itself made sense because of things like this, I have a personal relationship with reality. We're not a cult, we just have identifiable talking points and meetings and identifiable pseudoscience and identifiable fake history and an identifiable axe to grind and an identitarian attitude and a political agenda, but we are not a cult and we are not a movement. Come join here, pay membership dues. I mean, really. At some point, if you guys can't look around and see that that's what you've done, it's ridiculous. Go get into freaking yoga, for goodness sake, if you have to. All right, everybody. Well, we're here every night, so please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Please give us uh, your spiritual support and your financial support on redpillreligion.com. And God bless everybody.